title of the video says it all. If you're a junior developer, you need to stop using AI. Now this might sound extreme, but I guarantee you that this is one of the best decisions that you'll make. And not only will it help you to accelerate your journey to learning programming, but it'll also help you get that dream software engineering job. This video is going to be broken up into three parts. By the way, if you're new to my channel, I'm Imdad, a former software engineer that turned founder and CTO and currently running my own AI company. My videos are a mix of teaching you how to code with my favorite programming language, Python, but also giving you advice if you're thinking about becoming a software engineer or breaking into tech. Please do tap the like button and if you enjoyed this video of course you're more than welcome to subscribe. So without further ado let's get started. So the first reason why you shouldn't use AI as a junior developer is all about learning the ropes. Have you heard of that saying, walk before you can run? One of my favorite scenes in Batman Begins starts off where young Bruce Wayne falls down a well and injures himself. Shortly after, his dad comes down the well and says one of my favorite lines in the whole movie. A line so good that Alfred later repeats it to older Bruce Wayne when they're escaping from the fire. And it goes, Why do we fall, sir? So that we can learn pick ourselves up. If there's one line to summarize the journey of learning to code, I think it's this one. When you're writing your first piece of software or first learning to program, quite frankly, it's a very painful experience. It feels like something's working against you. You're trying to watch or follow a tutorial on how to get started, but you leave even more confused. Or you finally finish one session of coding only to find that when you give your program a run, you see a bug and you spend hours trying with no luck on how to fix it. The point is you're going to go through this very difficult and painful experience. But while it might seem like this isn't meant to be, I think this is probably going to be one of the most useful lessons for you as a junior developer. Because in that time, you're starting to develop a skill needed by pretty much every software engineer. This is one skill that AI can't give you, and that's perseverance. In this early period, you're essentially like a sponge. You're developing a real rigor and soaking all this new information in. And you're really building up your knack for battling and solving new problems and challenges. But most importantly, you're learning why things aren't working and what it takes to make them work. And then you're actually doing the thing of making it work. This is such a critical period of your development because it's starting to form the foundations of your skills in building software. By using AI at this stage, you're taking that rigor away. And instead what you're doing is not understanding why your code doesn't work or run, but instead verbally abusing an AI because it can't give you a working solution. The more you pull on AI at this stage to do the work for you, the less skill you'll develop. And this is going to mean that you're so reliant on AI to write code for you that you actually end up not learning how to code. The next reason why you shouldn't use AI as a junior developer is largely based on the fact that software is complex. The ecosystem of programming languages, tools, and editors is quite vast. Tech moves so quickly and there's so many programming languages and services for pretty much everything. And software can get very complex. It's one thing to build a website for yourself that's only going to be used or viewed by a handful of people, but it's a completely different thing when you're building a feature that's going to be used by a billion. Think of it like this. More than 1.3 billion people use an iPhone today. Imagine you're a mobile engineer on the iOS team and you're about to release a feature. Can you imagine the complexity in trying to build this feature and then going on to release that feature given that it's going to be used by more than a billion people. Millions of lines of code in this code base and decades of research and development. This is no small feat and quite frankly requires a lot of skill. The algorithm that you write for this feature needs to be fast and performant. It needs to be bug free or you're going to cost Apple millions for as long as the feature has this bug. The point is when you work in this ecosystem, software can become complex. And in this context, software is much more than just code. And in an environment where you're working with a complex code base, you're likely going to be working with other talented software engineers. And while it might seem that you can just run away and ask AI all of your questions, when you're working on a team like this, you need to know your stuff. And with that level of pressure and responsibility, your use of AI here can only take you so far. So as a junior, you want to build the practice of not relying on AI from the get-go. Otherwise, in situations where it's not going to be there for you, it can be very detrimental in this context. And this is especially the case when you're working on real-world software. The last reason why you shouldn't use AI as a junior developer is largely linked to the current state of the job market. It's been reported that more than 200,000 people have been laid off in tech. And if you look a bit closer into the numbers, much of it has been targeted towards junior software engineers. Laying off used to be very taboo. 
difficult to do and it was quite hard to come by. We've just gone through one of the most lucrative periods for tech. Software engineers were in demand left, right and centre. But now many companies are jumping on this bandwagon of laying off employees. They have an excuse now and it's much easier to do when the big tech giants are doing it. It's all in the name of operational efficiency and it's much easier to let the junior engineers go because naturally they have less experience, require more mentoring and are easier to let go than senior engineers who have been around for much longer. And these days, tech companies are just pushing this notion that they're only hiring senior engineers. So right now, it's a really bad situation if you're trying to break into tech as a junior developer. Now, time will tell how long this will continue, but right now we're in what I like to call the bear market. And because it's such a difficult time, trying to take shortcuts in using AI is not going to help you. I've seen videos of junior developers going as far as using AI tools in an interview live to help. While this might seem like a cool idea and makes for a great TikTok, it's very easy for your interviewer to suss this out. If you're doing this in an interview, it's just going to make it much more difficult for you, especially if you get asked to solve a coding question live in that moment. If you've spent hundreds of hours asking ChatGPT for solutions, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to write code confidently without it. And it's really going to bite you in the interview. My suggestion is that you should only use AI to answer the why questions. For example, why does Node use an event loop? Why does a binary search tree have a logarithmic runtime? These kind of questions are more on the theoretical side and help you strengthen your understanding of computer science. They'll help you to understand key concepts and the overall ecosystem. But what they won't do is give you solutions to code, which is what you don't want as a junior developer. Because where you're really going to develop as a software engineer is if you write all of the code yourself. And if you work through that difficulty of writing that code and you learn to plow through all of that difficulty as you're build in software. And this is going to make a real difference for you, especially when it comes to you trying to get that software engineering job. And it's going to make your interviewing process much easier. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you're starting to learn how to code, make sure you check out my channel. I've made videos on how you can learn Python with projects, which you might find useful. And I'll link to one above here where you can get started. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.